What's up internet, John here from NextGen. Welcome to another edition of Inside Out. In this video, we'll break down potentiometers. Potentiometers are commonly used to control electrical devices. In guitars, they're used as volume and tone controls. In amps, they are used to control a variety of features. Volume, bass, mid, and treble are great examples. They are also used in a wide assortment of pedals to control almost anything you can think of. Let's open some up and see how they work. We'll start by looking at a burns pot. Let's begin by removing the nuts and washers. Now we can bend the four tabs and remove the body. The shaft passes through the bushing and a phenolic wafer and connects to a plastic disc. This disc has little metal wipers. Printed on the phenolic wafer are two rings of conductive carbon material, one for the center lug and one that connects the outside lugs. The amount of carbon material is what determines the total resistance of the pot. The thicker the carbon, the less resistance. The thinner the carbon, the more resistance. The wipers move across this carbon ring and make a connection across the two rings. The position of the wiper determines what portion of the total resistance is divided between the center lug and the outer lugs. This is why potentiometers are known as variable resistors. Alpha pots have an almost identical construction to Burns pots, the main difference being in the feel. Burns pots have a much lower torque, so they turn very easily, whereas Alpha pots have a higher torque, making them feel much tighter. This difference in torque is achieved by the difference in the pressure of the wipers. Alpha mini pots are just a smaller version made in the same way. These pots are generally used in effects pedals because of their smaller size. It is worth noting that the plastic disc in both the Alpha and Burns pots is incredibly secure. The only way to remove it is to break it apart. The plastic is very hard and the shaft is pressed into it on the bottom. This can be troublesome in terms of repairs or replacing parts within the pot. However, this makes for a very solid potentiometer that is not prone to mechanical failures. CTS pots have a slightly different construction. We can open them up the same way, but they differ on the inside. The carbon ring is printed on its own layer of phenolic and clamped into place by the outside lugs. The inner ring and center lug are one piece of metal and the ring portion is elevated. The wipers make the same connection as they do in the Alpha or Burns. They only differ in their overall shape. It's also worth noting that CTS pots have grease both on the shaft and inside the body casing. Pots come in many different values depending on their application. They can also vary in the relationship between the wiper position and resistance. This is referred to as a taper. The majority of pots come in three types of taper, A, B, and C. A, also known as an audio or logarithmic taper, is an exponential sweep from zero to the maximum resistance of the pot. B, or linear taper, is a straight sweep, and C, or reverse audio or reverse logarithmic, is essentially a backward version of an audio taper. A no-load tone pot is where one end of the carbon layer is cut from the lug and there is a little space between the lug and the carbon. This way, when the pot is turned all the way in that direction, there is infinite resistance, thus blocking the signal. That is great for tone pots, but not so much for volume, as it would mean no signal would pass through. You may have noticed that all of these pots have a detent in the body casing. This is to mark the start and end point of the wipers so they don't spin endlessly. The plastic discs have an extrusion that bumps the detent in the casing and prevents further movement. Pots come with many different shaft types, but the three most commonly used on guitar equipment are solid shaft, coarse spline split shaft, and fine spline split shaft. Solid shafts are usually 6.35 millimeters in diameter and are smooth all around. These types of shafts require knobs with set screws to tighten them into place. They are not compatible with push-on style knobs. Coarse spline split shafts, sometimes referred to as import split shafts, are six millimeters in diameter and have 18 vertical grooves known as splines as well as a cutout center portion. 
Fine spline split shafts, sometimes referred to as USA split shafts, are similar to coarse spline but have 24 vertical grooves with the center cutout. Split shaft pots will work with knobs that have set screws but are designed to be used with push on style knobs. Be sure to pick the correct knob for the type of shaft on your pot. The most common issues with pots is that they can collect dust and dirt inside. This will cause them to sound scratchy when they're turned. To fix this, you can spray some contact cleaner inside the pot and rotate it back and forth to spread the cleaner. If that doesn't work, you can always open it up and clean all the tracks and wipers with the cleaner. A highly recommended cleaner and lubricant is Deoxid. Some people have mentioned using WD-40, though it is our recommendation that you do not use WD-40 inside pots. It may be a temporary fix, but it will ruin the pots over time and you'll end up having to replace them. As mentioned in our previous videos, electromechanical devices like pots and switches can be damaged by high heat from a soldering iron. Careful and efficient soldering technique is always a must. Thanks for watching. That concludes this edition of Inside Out. Hopefully we were able to help you better understand how potentiometers work. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video, leave us a comment and let us know what else you'd like to see us break down in this way. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future videos.